Everybody already know what it do When you really gotta kill it, you nobody gonna feel it When you really gotta tell them it's my crew It's best friend weekend, we can party all night We got Ross moving loads, rumble, Eldo nice It's the uncle Damn, it's only been like a week and a half in 2020 Maybe not even a, a lot, not even a whole seven days in 2020 And just so much madness has went on and transpired And usually... I don't even know what I want to run it about, so I just be saying some shit or whatever. The first thing that comes to my mind, Mr. One Take Jake himself. But uh, I'm really lost for words. I don't even know what I want to run it about. And with that, this just brings me to my next point. You know, I'm not sure if I want to touch on Trump and his antics. I'm not sure if I want to diss everybody who voted for Trump. Side note, if you voted for Trump, I still think you's a clown. You with racism. And or you have a brain the size of a peanut, like you're not even operating on the 10 percent that everybody else is operating. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not sure if I want to touch on, you know what I'm saying, the whole little situations in the NFL, how pretty much yet again, black coaches got shitted on again. And like they got bullshit guys who got hired for these jobs yet again. Or I'm not sure if I want to touch on, you know, will 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 Harvey Weinstein get that bill treatment? Will he get rolled out like Bill? I'm just a loss for words. So far, 2020 has been pretty eventful. I say, whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. It's your man, Aldo. Nice. It's your boy, Raj Move. Wow, it's your boy, Los, a.k.a. C.A.P. Rumble, thank you for taking us into the new year. We appreciate it. Um, First things first, there was a... A little bit of a, a vote that went out about who had the best list. Two people commented on the um, 2020 list. One person voted for Raj Move. One vers- person voted for Aldo Nice. And I guess we just have to say the thing that nobody, um, that only me and Raj know. Um, we did a little, a little poll on the, on Raj the. Raj won, huh? Oh, no. no. Rumble won by a landslide. You came in second by a landslide. Me and Raj had like two <laughs> votes each. <laughs> Nobody likes this in real life. Raj, what is it? Is it because we're mean? Is it the bullying? You know what it was? It was because we didn't put Charlemagne the God. That's what it was. That's, that's exactly. what Tyler was Perry. convinced of. They needed and Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. Tyler Perry. I don't Tyler. know what y'all slipping. I mean, we should have went Oprah, Obama, <laughs> no. uh, Tyler Perry, Ma- Rock. Martin Luther the King. No, <laughs> that's what, King. Hey, you know what? You know what? Max Frederick Douglass. Hey, that's Perry why they don't Douglas. like y'all right there. That's why they don't like y'all right there. <laughs> y'all be with the bullshit. I mean the bull jump. That's I guess that's telling us about our audience. Uh, we said what our target audience is. Who's the person we think's listening? I guess the people who <laughs> listening is black. <laughs> <laughs> and if they not, woke. They woke. They woke. They black. They love blackness, and they like nah. We're not hearing nothing y'all talking about. Or at least our Instagram <laughs> following. Maybe not the listeners, but our Instagram following. Um. So speaking of black things, Rumble just said something about um coaches. And he said something about Bill Cosby, both um, versus Harvey Weinstein. Both of those are germane black issues. Um, and I'm going to mm-hmm. start with the Bill Cosby working in reverse order from One Take Jake himself. And hmm. first thing, um, Harvey Weinstein, you think he's going to get the bill treatment? Nah. <laughs> white man, dog. Man not getting no bill treatment. He going to get something. He ain't going to get no bill treatment, though. That man not going to jail. And if he if he does, they're going to they gonna let him build his own. He might get... Uh, House arrest. The Escobar treatment. To, yeah, he not going to jail, man. White man not going to jail, dog. He ain't Bill Cosby. Hmm. What'd you say, Rob? I, I mean, I think he I think he gonna go to jail. I also, but I think whenever we say that bill treatment, I think I think the well, to be honest with you, and I might sound like a simpleton for this, but I had no idea who Harvey Weinstein was until he got in trouble. Like I didn't know who that was. Well, none of us probably everybody did. like by name. Well, everybody knows who Bill Cosby was. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby was an icon. So I think to say that he's gonna get that, like he can't, he can't get the bill treatment. Like we know who Harvey is because he's like the, the leader of the bad part of the Me Too movement. But I don't, uh, I don't, I think he's gonna go to jail. But the thing about it though, just because we didn't know who he was, doesn't mean he ain't somebody. Well, I'm no, just saying, I'm just using my knowledge, my knowledge as a microcosm for everybody. Like everybody knows Bill Cosby. 
no one knows Harvey Weinstein. Nah, so like, to say bill treatment, I don't know. No, but right. I, think the people I mean, who Lose. matter. Who, oh, go ahead. No, this is all I was going to say, Los, is that I think Harvey Weinstein is not on that Bill Cosby level. I think Roger's right about that. I think a person who's on the Bill Cosby um, level is like Trump. I think mm. that's that's mm-hmm. a that's a. Yeah. I mean, prior to him being the president, you know, like businessman and he, Donald and he, Trump. And he not he don't go to jail either. So yeah, so I mean, he's a white man. <laughs> no, <laughs> not here you go. Not here you go. Look, Look how you the, breaking it down to truth. to brass tags because he's a white man. That's the truth. It's the truth. I hear you. Uh, so I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but I feel like there will be some inequities. But let's just kind of keep it posted with that. The other thing Rumble talked about was black coaches, and I and something I really peep game on real quick. I don't remember what team it was. Maybe the uh, correct me if I'm Cowboys. wrong, Raj. It might have been the Giants. The first person they mm-hmm. interviewed was Marvin Lewis. Was it the Giants? No, that was that was the Cowboys. Was it the Cowboys? The Rooney Rule. They Rooney Rule. Yeah, I was like, oh, you just get Marvin Lewis. Just just come on, Marvin. Yeah. You just go to each team, Marvin. Right, right quick. We just go all they interview you. Yeah. And and him and Herm Edwards. No, Herm mm-hmm. Edwards already got a job, I guess, but not Herm Edwards. Uh, it was the other. The, uh, I think the little quiet dude, Hugh Jackson. Um, <laughs> He was the coach for Indianapolis. Yeah, it was somebody. Tony Dungy. Oh, no, that's um, no, yeah, Tony, Tony Dungy. Oh, Jim Caldwell. Ta- I know who you talking. Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. Jim. 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 Jimothy Caldwell. Yeah, that yeah. guy. Everybody. Um, everybody gave me a little, that little Rooney treatment real quick. We don't have to speak on that too much. We've talked about it in podcast past. It's a farce. It is not a real thing. It's equivalent and on par to a Colin Kaepernick workout. Um, come in, black coach, so we can say we got one because there's a rule about it. We've had whole episodes on it. I wish I could tell you exactly which one it was. But if you go back around this time in the year, uh, probably last year or the year before, we've had a whole podcast where we talked about that. So we're not going to dive deep mm-hmm. into it. I'm just going to tell you all right now what burns my boot at because I'm going to start with football because oh. that's what we're talking about. Uh, the first thing that burns my boot at um, this week is fans of teams not in the playoffs talking oh. down on the Saints. It happened. Look, look, dude, it happened. Y'all know. Y'all listen to this podcast. Understand. Y'all know. Y'all know we y'all know how we feel. Yes. Right. It hurt. Take it away, right? No. No, I just don't I don't understand it. I don't understand how you could say something like, I knew y'all was gonna lose. One, that's very, very dumb. Like there's I don't I don't know if people quite realize that only one team can win the Super Bowl. Oh, my favorite like, line. That, my favorite that's line. A, only one team can win the Super Bowl. It's a zero sum game. Huh. So mm-hmm. When you say something like, oh, and mind you, every team in the playoffs is good. When you say something like, I knew y'all was going to lose. When it comes down to it, I knew y'all was going to choke or something like that. Okay, that's that's fine. You you made a you made a you made a good guess, or you made a let's say you even made an educated guess if you really can support it with some sort of facts or opinion. But like your team didn't do anything. Yeah. In fact, your team in a different division most likely wouldn't have even sniffed the playoffs. Thomas. So <laughs> what gives you bow, 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 the shots fired. wherewithal to say something like that? Like, I don't understand how you going to criticize us, criticize the Saints, when your team didn't even make the playoffs. Thomas. See, the I, whole thing that's, is hurt people hurt people, man. <laughs> that's the only uh, way you can describe it. Hurt people hurt people, though. Like, Raj, I think I want to add to what you just said a little bit, that it's not – just one team. I think I'm going to kick back on that a little bit. Only one team can win the Super Bowl, but I feel like you can be a fan of two teams, an NFC team and an AFC team. And if your team makes the Super Bowl, then everybody else needs to shut up because your season went all the way to the end. If you lose the Super Bowl, so what? You made the Super Bowl. Like, outside of that, like, you can't really, like, like, and I say this all the time. I said it before the playoffs. I said it in Instagram posts. People didn't want to hear me. They were like, oh, them Saints better win the Super Bowl. Y'all made that video the other day. I'm like, only one team, only like, a not like that was the whole point. What you just said, Raj, that yeah, we don't, the Saints are not the NFC Pro Bowl team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if we were, <laughs> but we're a team that it that's that's subject to the same thing that every other team in the league is. So if we lose, we lost. Yeah, that's but it. but my big idea on this is just this. This is football in general, and, and just hear me out, right? When the Patriots went 18 and 0 and lost in the Super Bowl. My idea and my whole thought behind that was this. Football is something we wait all year for. It starts in like, we start cranking up in like August with preseason and stuff. The season starts in September. You have literally four or five months of football, 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 football. Mm -hmm. If your team is winning 
every week for four months. You can't ask for a better, like, that is what it's all about, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you get to go to work happy and have a good time and enjoy your life and hang out with your friends and have a good time between September and January. And if your team wins the Super Bowl, great. It's awesome. It's ecstatic. I felt that. I felt that this decade. I felt that in the last 10 years, you know? So mm-hmm. I understand what that's like. But the Saints going 13-3 and three means that 13 weeks out of, se- out of 17, let's say 14 because there was a bye week, we were happy all yeah. year. Your team mm-hmm. that's talking shit, eight of the y'all only had eight weeks of happiness. And y'all had a yeah. ruined Christmas and a ruined mm-hmm. New Year's, and you were mm-hmm. sick because your team wasn't winning. We just yeah. we caught an L, dog. But I, this was a and great then, season. And, then, and the, the crazy part about that, you tried to upgrade and you went and got the basic package. <laughs> you didn't even go get the premium. That's that's the funniest part about the whole thing to me. What coffee is. You, you you walk up to me and tell my who that when we lost. But you go get you a a, a little Honda Civic. You know, it got still got. Uh, it don't even have automatic windows. Here's so. here's what I here's, as a <laughs> they still make as them? a football. They still make them. <laughs> hey, as a as a football fan, this is how I feel. Like so, to piggyback on the fact that only one team can win a Super Bowl, I think, I think when I look, I don't I don't measure success necessarily by winning the Super Bowl. I really think, like you said, this season was fun mm-hmm. like whenever i look back at it, whenever i look back at it and i just think it's so funny that like people can really say something like y'all you always get to the point of you know you always get to the point of like the playoffs and then lose and then have some shocking loss or start complaining about some call that didn't get nonetheless when i look back on like this same season it was fun yeah. i bet you if i look at my phone like saints is probably my top search in, in my google searches Buffalo made the Buffalo made the the Super Bowl four years in a row. I bet you those four years were fun for Buffalo mm, fans. Yeah. Mm. I bet you this when we look at when we look at them boys, Thomas. and you look back at the ten years that we've had success, and you look back at that same ten years, it has not been fun. Mm-hmm. It's been agony. Mm-hmm. Thomas, mm-hmm. Yeah, full of so cocaine. Yeah. I I just don't understand <laughs> why you would. What, how like how you have any room to to say anything bad? You should just say, man, your boy's been good for a while. Like that's crazy. But yeah. we got our day coming. Like that that would be great football talk to me. Yeah. yeah. I got faith in my team for the future instead of just being so dreams of grandeur like. So we hate all of them. Thomas. Right? We hate all of them. And I'm just like at the end of the right day. At, at the end of the day, the Saints, um, it hurt. It, it hurts. And as sportsmen, like nobody talked to like we didn't talk to each other after like we hadn't talked to each other about this all week, you know? Like we're recording now. Since the game, we hadn't picked up the phone and talked about the Saints. It hurt. But yeah. they ripped the Band-Aid off quick. We didn't get excited about potentially going to win the Super Bowl. Like, we, we took an L real quick in a mm-hmm. game that we probably feel like we shouldn't have lost. But, I mean, of you course. know, that's that's how it happens. It's it's football. Yeah. It's not basketball. It's not like we got game two tomorrow I and mean, get it back up. You know, we, got, we, got to, we got to watch our backup go win some games. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. we got to Go watch some big game. set records. Drew set records. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Like, it's fun being a Saints Yeah, when time. you really take a look back at the season, this was one of the funnest seasons. Yeah, like this was a very fun season. Very yeah. exciting, man. I'm not so, mad no more anymore. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to watch. Um, I'm absolutely already ready to watch next year and just kind of see what we do in the off season and everything else. But that leads me to something else that burns my boot as well. Quote unquote. So and so has a watch party on Facebook. What the hell does that mean? Why are they having a watch party? What is that? And why does it pop up as a notification? I don't get it. Explain, Raj. Well, I've, I want to say I've never seen it. Never? Well, no, let me stop. Let me stop. I've never seen it. I've never seen that for a Saints game. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean... I've seen it. It's, it's, <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you might be misinterpreting okay. it. All right, no, that's what you didn't specify. Okay, so I thought, when. because I thought you might have seen it as well. On Facebook, sometimes I get notifications that say, um, Raj Shmoove is having a watch party. And I'm like, what does that mean? And if you click on it, it's literally them, like, Facebook Live. Well, so, all right, that's, so yeah, no, that's probably just an abuse of, of watch party. <laughs> because what I have seen a watch party for, <laughs> and yeah, no, I guess in that sense, it would burn my booty if it's Facebook Live and you just consider, you just like, coined it as a watch party what i have seen though is a high school football game like let's say westgate for instance 
have and someone is live feeding, feeding that game. It. I've watched that before, yeah. And then they have a watch party that type of way, and I'm completely okay mm. with that. In fact, that ice is my boudin, if anything. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I the first time I thought it might have been porn, like. Carlos is having a watch party, and I thought if I clicked it, I might have seen something I didn't need to see. Yeah, no, you ain't got to worry about that, man. I'm a... So after I clicked I thought, it, momentum, whenever I first saw it, I thought that Carlos was having a party to sell very, very nice <laughs> watches. <timepieces>. Watches? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought if it was Carlos, that it would have definitely have been a Geneva. Or... <laughs> it definitely wouldn't have been no... Boy, you going to make me go back? You wouldn't have been no to the old me, huh? Yeah, it wouldn't have been no Geneva. A Nixon nah, watch party. Okay, no. <laughs> not having a watch party. But if I was, <laughs> it would have it would have been it would have been uh bootleg Apple watches. A bootleg Apple, Apple watch party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. No, I believe if Rod Smooth had a watch party, it would be an <laughs> Apple Watch party. <laughs> An Apple Master Watch. <laughs> Apple, the Big Daddy. <laughs> Generation it's four. But yeah, that, that's 15. kind of... Yeah, that burns my boot in, man. Look, uh, two more things that burn my boot in. Another one. So we went camping over the holidays. Uh, shout out to the to the fam bam, to them Joneses one time. This podcast brought to you by them Joneses. So I got an opportunity to kick it with some of the fellas um, who are out there at... Um, where were we? Lake Foss Point. Baccalaureville in New Iberia, in the um, Iberia Parish area. And I was out there with Uncle Rob, one time for Uncle Rob, um, my pops, Jab, um, Michael Sterling, and um, in Rumble, Room Bay, as some call him. And mm. uh, we had to stay in, you know, we stayed in a cabin out there. And what burns my boot at is plastic mattress covers um, that go under the sheets. Burns oh, my to like protect it from people that pee in the bed. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Burn my booty. Absolutely. Yeah, because it, it may, it's just uncomfortable. It's it makes me it's sweat like sleeping on loose leaf paper. Yeah, it make it makes me sweat too. every time. Yeah. <laughs> now, how many That's times funny. have you slept on a plastic cover, Daddy? Well, I can say this: when I was um, when I was in my pee in the bed phase as a youngster, I do remember my mom putting a plastic mattress cover over my bed, like, like, no, nigga, you're not peeing in the bed today. That's what we're not, not deep, doing. Not you know what's funny though? Mattress. Yeah. I feel like if you if you if you get to the point where you pee in a bed, okay, cool, it's not gonna get on the mattress, but that that pee just gonna be sitting on that plastic. It's like a dog. Oh, you gotta gonna, sit or, in, in your own piss. Or, Put your nose yeah, in. Oh, it's gonna yeah. It's gonna tail Let off. You do this no it's more. Tail off on the side. Tail you know, off. Like it's gonna be oh to the side, go on the floor. Yeah, on the floor. It's gonna drip down. Oh my god, I hate y'all. No, it's just <laughs> I think it's gonna soak up into the sheets. Well, damn, it's a lot of piss probably if you're peeing, peeing. It's a lot, man. But no, I always sweat and like I think that when I go to like sometimes different um hotels and stuff, it's it's not always a plastic like a like a paper bag daddy. Some of them are like these next level mattress covers that aren't necessarily made out of plastic, but they're mm-hmm. never comfortable mm-hmm. to me. Like unless it's like one of those like a mattress cover that's like a protectant cotton goodness one. Yeah. Other than that, like a little mm-hmm. extra pillow top. Them all day, like you said, Raj cools my boot in. But anything that's plasticky, absolutely burns my boot in. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of that being on people's sofas either. I mean, uh, I, granted, I hadn't had had that on people's sofas, but that's not fun to sit where you can't slide. Yeah, you know, you yeah, gotta yeah. have a little leeway on the sofa. Like, just I want to move. I want to yeah. maybe just move my leg and anything like kind of sticky. Like it's like but, a leather sofa, like wet, wet, sticky. I feel like leather sofas do the same thing, Raj. Have you ever tried to take a nap on a leather sofa? It's terrible. So my, I can I, I'll just speak to that. My my parents have always had leather sofas. Ooh, um, one and, time. Uh, yeah, we. <laughs> it, I don't think it was ever genuine leather. I think it was like kangaroo. So, uh, yeah, now nah, you could slip and slide. I heard, I heard those kangaroo leathers going cheap after them Australian waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the views, the views. Go ahead, go ahead. The views of Aldo Nice, the, the not reflective views of the Best Friend Weekend podcast. I could tell <laughs> So you said you could always take a nap on those leathers. My parents upgraded to leather Absolutely. sofas after we went to college, so I hadn't, I had no, I had no, no knowledge. But when I go home and lay on them, I'd be sticky. I'd be having to put a little blanket over it. 
Yeah, I, I have one, and my parents always had one. And it's not the most. So both of y'all rich? No, we're not rich. We just sold all our food stuff. We had no food. <laughs> <laughs> How about a leather sofa with the plastic over it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that probably stinks. Anything with the plastic over it, it could be the most pristine, soft. Nap worthy material, <laughs> but you would never you know because you got the plastic. It's gonna mess on. it all up. Oh yeah, but Raj, I don't see why you would have a problem with this because you're the type of individual who gets a new car and leaves the plastic over the um the touch screen on the radio for weeks, months, even, bro, years. <laughs> like if I still had that same car, then the touch screen would still be on it. Why not? It's not what it's there what for. Happens? I take that shit off immediately. No, and so so this podcast is brought to you by. Uh, Grover 37. That's Tony Green, if you didn't know. That man is like, I don't know if you know what ASMR is. He will take those things off much, like every single time. Mm-hmm. If he finds it, he will take it off. Me, on the other hand, if my vehicle has a screen protector on it, that is a screen protector to me. Do you leave I'm it on your fo- it cell phone when you first get it to? Uh no, I'm a big I'm a big glass screen protector person. Okay. So no, I would I just I take. It so off. if there was a glass screen protector for your car, you would take it off and put that over it. No, if it was a glass screen protector on anything, I'm not taking it off. No, no, no. I'm saying if you there was a glass they screen protector one. for your car, if they sold those, you take off the plastic and put the glass screen protector on your car. Well, I don't plan on ever dropping my car on the ground. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. that was that was that, that was, was the well, best well one played, of the year. sir. And you know what? That, that burns my boot. Last thing that <laughs> last thing that burns my boot, <laughs> uh, my own personal boot, uh, um, is burning American flags. We're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on in that other country in a minute. Um, but when people burn American flags, like when when the USA do something, I'm always like, bro, find something new. <laughs> I just think it's crazy that y'all bought one to burn it. Like, I mean, nine times nine times of ten, they probably made them. Think about uh, things that got burned. Country that's bur- that's we don't burn flag, nothing. Probably we, don't, we don't burn nothing in this country, uh, Los. The only things that we burn are Kaepernick and LeBron jerseys. Like, what else do we burn? <laughs> well, no, let me let me I'm let me so actually sorry. let me ask you this: What else could you do to something, <laughs> and it ain't coming back? Because yeah. if you bleach. If you bleach an American flag, then you got like a dope ass all white American flag <laughs> or LeBron jersey it's not, or Kaepernick. It's not an American flag. But once you burn it, white. you can't do. It ain't no coming back. No turning back. No oh. turning back. Okay, yeah. The cross That's before right. me. The world behind. <laughs> so I think once you, yeah, no, I think I think burning something of value or or of uh, even sentimental it's value the is though. never gonna go away unless somebody wants to. Acid burning. I don't know. I don't even know what you would do. I think burning. I don't think. I don't know. Like I think that that's the ultimate disrespect, and it's gonna be for the rest of eternity. So the only thing that I think that's worse than burning a flag is burning my Buddha. But when you burn the flag, <laughs> think about it though. When they burn the flag, I think that their desired result is for us in America to be like, I hate y'all. We gotta come fight y'all. And I think that might have been the case in the fifties. How many people do you think care in the 2020s? Like when social media kids put on, they burn an American flag. They just put on a little Uzi Vert and keep on doing what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. True. It's, 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 true. It's supposed to be against the law, right? Yeah, but it's not our country, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what? You know what's funny? I mean, not funny, but I'm, I'm sure some of our uh, listeners would definitely have some empathy to this. When I was in when I was in elementary school, we used to have to put the flag up in the morning. Like that was one of the duties. Like I'm over that. A, a different kid used to mm-hmm. have to do it, mm-hmm. and it was like a, it was a big super duper no no to ever let the American flag the touch ground. the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Like you know, and I was just like, I mean, it still work. <laughs> nah, because you supposed to, you're supposed to burn, if it touched the, the ground, you're supposed to burn it. If it touched the ground, that's the crazy part. That's that's what if it's supposed to touch the ground, you burn. If, if it, it touched the ground, you're supposed, supposed to burn, burn it. But yeah. you got to discard it that's in a certain type of way. You can't burn it. You got to like bring it to the national guard or something. And let them boys burn uh, it. I'm that didn't serious. Explain it to me, yeah. but, um, you don't I just take know. that thing out. Don't take the American flag out in the front yard and burn it if it touches the ground. Right? Yeah, you know, take the American flag out. 
Burn um, it and then put it on Instagram. I was yes, over don't that. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was over that. I was over that hat. I was over it's called Safety Patrol or whatever. So I was over that that part of the at the school and a couple of kids didn't they didn't tighten the thing up right on the pole. And I got a call saying, Oh, uh <laughs> hey, the the flag is on the the flags, the Texas and the American flag on the ground. So I just Ooh. went back up there and lifted it back up and Tightened up the I way. knew he was about to say, I just went back up there and lit them things <laughs> on fire. Just out front, out front the school. I don't, <laughs> nah, 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 so, hey. state flags is different. State flags is a lot different. Because yeah. in Texas, that's what you do. But in Colorado, if the flag touched the ground, the Colorado flag specifically. Uh, he's so the ground, stupid. He's so stupid. Up, <laughs> and smoke it. You roll it up in a, in a blunt. blunt smoke it, yeah. Weed. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> This is a true story. <laughs> so, if the Cali flag hits the ground, what do you do? You roll it up and you snort coke out of it? Is that what? No, you roll that one up in weed. What would be the coke? Yeah. The coke yeah. daddy flag, Florida? No, Cuba, Mexico, Florida, yeah. that that area, Mexico. Yeah. No, the Colombian flag. There Col- you go. Yeah, the snort Colombian that thing. flag. You smoke. You snort. You snort <laughs> coke out that dad. Hey man, wouldn't it be funny if like one of these foreign countries was like? It was like, oh my god! Like you know, all of these, all of these people were like, oh my god! I can't believe y'all are burning the flag. And then they commented back and said, "Chill out! It touched the ground." <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Wouldn't that be funny? Relax. Be, it hit the ground. That'll be, that'll be priceless. That'll be priceless. I love it. Hey, y'all tripping about that flag? But we was just going again, going with um, Article Seventeen in the Constitution of your country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> relax. So ground. relax. You don't see this flag, flag clearly on the ground that's burnt. Chill out. Man. You tripping? <laughs> Y'all stupid, <laughs> man. Okay, so um, we did allocate a couple of weeks ago the rights to um, allocate the rights. We started a new Instagram page. Uh, what burns my booty? So what mm. burns my booty is an is an Instagram page that's been active for some time. We haven't really got all of the the sauce on it, but you can start following it right now. The sauce is about to start coming really soon. And we're yeah. going to be getting some What Burns Boudins from different people in and, in and around. You can submit yours. We're going to give you some of them. We're send gonna a have video. Yeah, send yeah, a send video. video. Tell us what burns your, your boudin. Absolutely. Two things that we did already get from um, listeners, which will go on the What Burns My Boudin site. One um, from at Bearded Six Footer, one of our uh, favorite listeners. He said, Shout out. What Burns His Boudin is females who laugh like esk, 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 esk. And he calls it the throat laugh. Esk, 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 esk. <laughs> I like that. I think that that's funny. I had to sound out with ESK, 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 ESK. Oh, you're like... <laughs> you think that's it? That. You think that's it? It's not esk, esk, esk. <laughs> that laugh. I don't think anyone that says is... esk, 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 esk. Yeah, I'm sure they don't say that. You, you sounded real crazy. I tried to take it. I wasn't going to call you out on it, but... No. Thanks, Rob. Esk, esk, esk. It's... No, it's... <laughs> I think it's, it's I think it's exactly what Lucy said. <laughs> <laughs> but I think especially Rod on fire in I don't 2020, think you're especially bro. right though, right? Rod on fire. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, people out there. Excuse me. For- <laughs> yeah, I don't like people that ex- execute execute they uh, they laugh like that either. Why Why do y'all feel like y'all have to explain that to everyone? <laughs> No, y'all are stupid. I hate y'all, man. It's One time ex- for the- execution. <laughs> I'm the joke, and I didn't execute the joke very good. You didn't execute the joke. <laughs> when we gonna when we gonna talk about Trump and that big explosion? <laughs> and, uh, and his excuses for <laughs> yeah, man. Stop it, man. They said that after that, that all of the fucking gas and oil prices going up. So y'all gonna get it's gonna cost like ten dollars a gallon at X sign, you know? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Especially okay. people in the big Escalade. <laughs> <And> the- <laughs> Stop it, the big Escalade. <laughs> One time for beard is six footer. Last thing that burns the public's boot is Rumble. Rumble said that, mm. um, and you know, hold up. If y'all not following Rumble for the nine for the for the for the twenty twenty, I was about to say for the nine two because his name is Whoa. Bruce Banner underscore ninety two. That's why my mind was on that. Um, it, follow him, Bruce Banner underscore ninety two. But I think it's time. Like mm. y'all made me change my Instagram name from Coach Nice to Aldo Nice. Like mm. recently. Cause y'all were like, a lot of people don't even know you used to coach. Like you haven't been a coach yeah. since ever. Like you're Aldo Nice. Yeah. 
it's time for Rumble to change that name to like Rumble 92 or something, right? Yeah. That's not even the only one. I think it is. I think it should be uh, Rumble or Rumbe, whatever one. <laughs> I'm cool with either one. And just like we cha- we made you change, we made the uncle change his name to it's the whatever uncle. it was before. Mm-hmm. What was it before? I don't remember at all. Something Trent, huh? Something probably with Trent, but it's the uncle now. Shit. T Suave or something like that it was. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Hold up. So is it time so right oh you are right smooth. So is it time for Los to be like C A P A K Los? No, it's Los I mean, AKA. Three one eight big cap? I mean three one eight big cap is dope, but it I think, I think it it's should time be Los be... AKA C A P. I think it should L-O-S-A-K-A-C-A-P. be Los A K A C A P. I think it should be. I think it's time. It's Los. Done. You don't lose it. <laughs> You don't lose any followers. You don't lose yeah. any followers. It no, automatically. It's what people expect. Anyway, it's yeah. done. It's done. Okay, cool. I'm happy we did that. Um, but this is what burns Rumble's boot at. When you get in that weird conundrum, when that I'm reading Rumble speak, which is funny. When you get put in that weird conundrum, when so say somebody holding the door for you, but you're not necessarily close. So you damn near got to start jogging to the door <laughs> or just be like an asshole and keep the same pace you initially operating at. <laughs> love Rumble. Don't you love Rumble? I did that, I did that today. <laughs> man, I was, <laughs> that's what made it funny. I was so far away that man was trying to hold the door. And I was just like, bro, I'm not about to run over that man. He's just going to hold that bitch and let it go. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, he sat there and held it. Though. I was like, appreciate it, big dog, because I wasn't about to run. You gotta wave them <laughs> off, I think. You gotta wave them off, like and yeah. point at nah, your knee ahead. or something. Stop. Yeah, you gotta give him a hand gesture. You can't just do you. I just did me today all the time. I'm like, man, I'm not about to. You know run. what I'm saying? Like, you gotta give him some. Like, you good? You good? I'm taking my time. Like, I don't. You know what's funny? I think it's okay to it like explain yourself. Explain um, yourself. <laughs> when it, you know, like in in um in times like that, you know, whenever you like taking your time, I'm chilling. I don't feel like running. Hey, man, it's all good. Yeah. Go ahead. Like you got you, we always have enough time. But just like we, whenever someone opens the door for you, mm-hmm. and there is enough room for you to like get there in time, and you say appreciate it, mm-hmm. I think we always try to abbreviate stuff, abbreviate our actions, or abbreviate our words. When we could just be like, "Hey, man, I really appreciate you," huh. instead of saying "appreciate." It. That's too many words, man. Not nah, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate it, you, bro. Yeah, yeah. appreciate you. But, but what I'm saying is, is if you were to say. I'm good. I'm taking my time. Won't you go ahead in the store? That's enough for me to like. I'm. I'm. That's something I'm working on. In you know how far you gotta be. Oh, you know how far you are away to say that to him. Are you gonna scream that? <laughs> Wait, say, bro. I'm straight, dog. <laughs> I just want. I just don't want him to say, "Nah, man, I got you." Uh, you know, like I don't want him to insist. That means that mean he flirting. That's stupid. I mean, I think about this as the elevator too. Like when you go into the elevator and you see somebody coming and you got your hand there, like I'm a whole elevator for. Them. It's the same idea of just coming I, down. I, that I hall. never, ever, I, ever. I don't know if y'all know this. Never take the elevator. I always take the escalator <laughs> every single time. It's on fire. I get, I get in, the, I get in the elevator though, and I do like when somebody's coming. I'll go hide like in the corner. And press the button and just let it close. <laughs> it's just like it. But we've discussed this already. Y'all know how I'm, I'm kind yeah, of an yeah, um, elevator asshole, just a bit. Yeah. Um, all right, before we get into our big stories, let me just say this. Uh, congratulations to our raffle winners for the Best Friend Weekend Dad Had Daddies um, at Hillary Banks and at Too Legit to Quit. They got the BFW Camo Dad Had Daddies. Hey, so, shout uh, out. You know, they should be having them. You know, we put them in the mail earlier this week, so you should probably post something on the site. With our raffle winners, we're gonna have more raffles, more giveaways in 2020. So be on the lookout for that. Um, that's gonna incorporate you and your best friends. So, like I said, be on the lookout for that. So we talked a little bit about burning American flags. <clears throat> hey, wait a minute! Did you notice that I, I entered us in the raffle? That you what now? Oh, you did enter us. We I didn't win. I, I did I, notice that, I and I was wondering to myself, what is he doing? I think he that's wanted some raffle. some of the gear that I have that y'all don't have. Like that's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> like, I need, <laughs> I need because neither one of y'all got a work shirt, Dad. Yeah, I got one. Oh, you do? I let me tell you exactly what I said to myself. I said, I can't believe that Los is doing that. And then I said, you know what? Never mind. That is very Los. <laughs> 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 you know, I need him to stop. I need no, him to stop. No, we don't no, have time no, for this. please. No. He's coming up All with right. some more stuff. He's gonna be quiet for a while. So let's talk about. Uh, we talk about Flatburn. Let's talk about Trump's war right now. Um, so. 
earlier today when we were talking about content, I sent out an email to um, a text. A tesk to the two um, <laughs> <laughs> to the two other members of Best Friend Week, and I was like, "Raj, Los, what y'all want to talk about?" Raj in true Raj fashion didn't respond. Never all day. respond. Um, but <laughs> Los was like, "I was sleeping." Yeah, yeah. I was getting my rest. You sleep. You <laughs> rest. So look, rest. um, he was so um, Los responded, and the first thing he was like, "Let's talk about the war." And Trump. And I was like, let's, why? I was like, what do y'all, like, our audience don't want to hear about that. They want to hear us tell jokes. We're a comedy podcast that talks about some real stuff. I'm like, I don't think that, I was like, what do you even know about the war? He's like, I can figure it out today. Everything I need to figure out. So instead of going that route, I just wrote down five questions. One, two, three, four, six questions. Six Um, Six, Six questions, questions to ask y'all guys to, about the war, and then we can maybe go in on it a little bit. Okay, so no Googling, Raj or Los. I just want to know you what know you know. I ain't Googling nothing. First question, who we who we beefing with? Iran. Okay, good, good. The government. What, what's the capital of Iran? That I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know either. Okay, sure. Good. What's the capital? Um, you know the answer? What's the answer? Oh, ta- yeah. I, and the answer to this is, I know the answer to all five of these things before... Because um, you Googled them, bitch. No, 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 no. I knew these. Oh. I only asked questions I knew the answer to. It's Tehran. Okay. Um, Tehran. Who's the president okay. of Iran? Uh, don't know. That's a trick question. It don't matter because the supreme leader is actually the top dog um, and it only had two. But I'll give you some points if you can tell me what they call the supreme leader of Iran. The Supreme Leader. Ge- uh, He's not a general. No. Um... I think they call him the Supreme Leader. Yeah. I'm, that's right. that's a good that's a good guess. They call him um, the Ayatollah. Ayatollah. Y'all never heard that before? No. Nah. Never heard that kind of. Yeah. It's like I the religious that, leader, so and the religious leader is actually kind of kind of above all. Like the biggest one they had was Ayatollah Khomeini, and like I watched this. The only reason I know these answers is because I watched this documentary on Frontline about Iran. So and basically, Saudi she Arabia. asked me a question. She asked me a question and I told her. And I told her. I was like, I told you already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, what's the biggest rich religion in Iran? Uh, Hindi. Nah, they Muslims. Good. God, there you go, Los. There you go. They Muslims. But what makes them a little different is they're 90 plus percent Shiite and not the Sunni Muslims like um like 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 Saddam and them. But most of the Arab world is Sunni. So I think that's yeah. the red and white. Um, check it, little you know, mm-hmm. daddy. They like be wearing Dubai. on their head, like people wear yeah. Dubai. Yeah, but I think the Shiite might be red and black. But correct me if I'm wrong. But, but they're I think, like not like everybody else. But I think it's something different when they they women do something different with their their guard too, mm. right? Probably so. I think so. Oh yeah, that's when I think that's the ones that got like an underline on their eyes. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, stop it. Um, what did they call Iran back in the day before, like the 1930s? Mm, um, don't know. I I don't know. Y'all might be able to get this one. The Middle East. That's a good guess too. Uh they used Iraq. to call it Persia. <laughs> Persia. Oh, okay. You know, like well, when they say Persian people the, in like history. You teaching on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, yeah, I've heard of their prince before. Yeah, I've heard of their prince. <laughs> their <laughs> prince. Actually, prince is actually from Persia. He's Iranian. That's why he was light skinned like that. Um. Uh, yeah, that's where all the cats come from because they purr. <laughs> so that's what they call no, but they do have Persian cats. You're stupid. Oh, um, and I guess we're getting into the story. How did this all crack off? Who they killed? Did y'all guys know? The the uh, second in command. There you go. They banged him at the airport. Well, they banged uh, him in Iraq. This is huh? They banged him in Iraq when he was at the um yeah, at, he, in Iraq. He was at the airport. He was at the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah His um name is. I think I think I'm pronouncing it right, Soleimani, um, yeah. General Soleimani. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they took him out, and I mean, you know, that's how that boy basically they got him in Iraq, and Trump came out and was like, you know, he's a he very was bad, obviously by himself. He's a very bad guy, mm-hmm. he, whatever and whatever. But a lot that you got to take into consideration is that, like I said, that the Ayatollah is like number one because their religious leader is like the number one thing. But there also yeah. is a president, mm-hmm. but their president is like kind of a figurehead in a sense mm-hmm. and the second in command is the general so he's like number two in the country he's like pence yeah basically yeah. like fucking like joe biden so yeah. trump just was like i'm taking that boy out 
just cause. You know what I mean? Just cause. Damn, that boy got to go. So yeah, it was. Uh, a, it really was a whole pissing contest. He really could have. Really trying to bring you know come to the table and talk about some stuff. But none of those countries like like Trump. Like mm-hmm. China was like, I'm on go. North Korea was different. Like, hey, I'm with the shits. You know, whatever y'all want to do, let's go. Um, you know, so yeah, Trump it was. It was a who got who got the biggest wiener. So, I mean, so <laughs> I mean, obviously, since then, um, they had the big funeral. That thing mm-hmm. looked very much like Biggie Smalls' funeral with a bunch it of ants. A lot more aggressive. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hype Biggie Small. I mean, I think somebody. I think there is a video playing, and if there isn't, we should put one. When we start playing um, Juicy or whatever they started playing, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and miss that, my home. Oh, no, you don't remember on the Biggie funeral they started playing the music and everybody oh, yeah, was on top yeah, of the yeah. cars. Yeah, yeah. We should probably kind of. I should. I could probably do that. Where we put the two, mesh the two videos together of that <laughs> funeral, and then start playing that Biggie. Okay. Anyway, um, stupid. And then put like black people are with y'all. We don't want. We don't want no wall. Um. Anyway. Nah, don't. Put um. That. Don't put that. Nah. <laughs> don't put black people are with y'all. Nah, don't put that. No. We don't want no smoke nah. from the black contingent. I mean, but that's what the memes have been all about. Yeah. About black people. Like, we don't want that smoke. Yeah. I got three cousins in the military, man. Don't put that. Them boys, yeah. them, them boys had to pack 18-hour bags today. Go go home, black man. This ain't your war, is what they say. So, nah, that ain't so the big question is, why did Trump do it? Um, and, you know, you just said pissing contests and other things. I mean, obviously, the two things that came to my mind, the first thing was impeachment. That mm-hmm. he's under, he's been impeached. His approval ratings are probably down. So he's like, let me do something to change the narrative so y'all not talking about that anymore. Mm-hmm. That's the first and foremost thought I had. Yeah. Um, but someone else came and told me it's about re-election. That, mm-hmm. you know, Republicans like war and they get re-elected in times of war. They so this is like the time to start up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. What are y'all thoughts? Are those like the, the, the catalyst? Raj, what do you think? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have any thoughts about it um, at all. I don't know. I have no clue. I just, uh, I just know that I, man, that's, that's crazy. You know, and I think we've bombed, we've bombed places before under other tenures. Um, so when I, when I think about it, I just think that every single thing that Trump does is just under a microscope. And I just hope that this is one of those things that's under a microscope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope that it's one of those things where it's like, it's not as serious as we're making it. I hope we just had to beat on our chest like we always have to do. And we can just go on living our lives like normal and nothing crazy comes of this. That's a realistic hope. Mm-hmm. But I but I don't think I agree with your premise that it's like everybody else. Because even when we killed Saddam Hussein, um, it was like, capture him, give him a trial, yeah, buy his own people, kill him. Like, Osama bin Laden, yeah, we, we took that boy out, yeah. but, you know, he had that shit coming. And he wasn't the president of nobody's country. He mm-hmm. wasn't, like, He's you know, all of that. Time, yeah. yeah, you legit, like, this is legit like going to kill, like, Kim Jong-un's, mm-hmm. l- like, second in command in North Korea. Like, yeah. that's, like, that's wild just to go murk that boy, like, because, ah, you're bad. Yeah. Like, I think that's wild. So, mm, we got a whole lot of breath on this one. I just, I just think, I, I don't think he has a sense of democracy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, because a lot of things... Happen between different countries, and then we don't, you know, they end up talking it out. A lot of stuff we don't even know, but they end up talking it out. And I think he he just went diplomacy. And, yeah, that right there. What? No, it's the mark. You right? Okay. Diplomacy. Yeah, sure. Right there. Go ahead. Yeah, same thing. Whatever. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we end up talking stuff out about that type of stuff. And I think he just like he playing Call of Duty at this point to me. And he just you know and, you know he he not even thinking about. Lives lost, you know, you sending people's, you know, kids or, you know, families, mothers, fathers, cousins, brothers, sisters over there. He just like he don't he you know, he never had boots on the ground and been in, in war, any of that type of stuff. So he just like, fuck it, let's just do this. Like he ain't he ain't scared to push the button with nothing. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the, that's one of the things where he won't even come that's to the scary. Table. Yeah, that's one that's one of the things I think that's real scary with him more so than anything, is that he ain't willing. He, you know, he's he's not willing to come to the table and talk it out before he 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 quick to push the button more than anything. You know what I'm saying? You just yeah. never know. Cause me, I feel like those people they 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 gotta have people over here already. They already they already were chanting, you know, the, uh, kill American chants and all that stuff. So it, it's not like none, nobody from over there lives over here already, and we know they ready to die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They still just to prove a point. So. Speaking speaking of Biggie Smalls, right? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like that's why it's such a big deal when people like a lot of look at our past presidents. A lot of them were military people, like a lot. You know, all yeah. of the Bush, Bush senior and um, and well, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not recently as much, right? Because yeah. Obama wasn't, yeah. and neither was George Bush Jr. and whatever. But a lot of people who ran or the running mates were part of the military because they know that 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 sacrifice and yeah. that ideas that go behind that. Yeah. My pops used to say that. Um, this because a big thing on the internet right now is talking about the draft, like me when the draft come and people mm-hmm. like saying that whatever. So just for people out there who don't know, on the current law, all male U.S. citizens between the ages of eighteen to twenty-five are required to register uh, within thirty days of their eighteenth birthday. In addition, certain categories of non-U.S. citizen men between eighteen to twenty-five living in the United States must register, particularly permanent residents, refugees, asylum seekers, and illegal immigrants. Um, so that's if a draft was, was put into place. Mm-hmm. So just all of that to say, we wouldn't be in nobody draft because we, we, we're too old. old. <laughs> we're too old for that. Yeah, I want us. Um, uh, but they would definitely put all the illegal Ill- immigrants and, <laughs> and they would all accidentally come up. I could already see it. But I mean, I, my question is about gender equality here. Um, uh, no, I'll just leave that there. So no, we're not going to, we're not drafting the women. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. I did, I just asked the question. I mean, I just asked the question. <laughs> hey, I just I just don't. I, you know what I don't. You know what I, I don't see I why they can't go. Like, don't understand. But I'm not saying you I can't. Dra- you don't understand. have to draft them for hand to hand combat, but you could draft them to go. You know, do stuff. Yeah, right? I mean, they they they. Are. I, I don't know. I mean, look. I know it's been. It's like literally. I think whenever you look at whenever you look at the evolution of the world over a less. I don't know a thousand years. It's been very ugly. And I just don't understand why now we can't just be, let me be the United States and y'all be Iran. And, and that's it. We don't even have to really fool with each other. Like, I don't even understand. I don't understand why it's got to well, be like that. And and granted, I know that we got some blame in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just don't understand. I don't understand why. Like, well, they, okay, own, they own a huge percentage of the, the world's oil. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to. Then we need to start figuring out other ways to make shit. We have, but it, it, it's, it's a lot of shit that got to move out here, and we still need oil. It's, and it's not even just oil. It's it's all resources. Yeah, it's resources, it's yeah. import, export. Yeah. It's, it's they trade make agreements. Shit for us. They make shit cheaper. Like, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And we're not, I'm not just talking about Iran. We're talking about just other countries. Yeah. That's why we can't just let other countries be who they is, mm-hmm. because they could stop our economy by pushing a button and saying, yeah. nah, you, you're not, not making, getting no more of this. Yeah. And and you know what? I just think that there should be nobility, and I think that there should be uh, gentlemen like, you know, like Diplomacy. not necessarily gentlemen agreements, but just just like I'm gonna say, I'm gonna stop at nobility. And and one thing that you know, what's always kind of like in the back of my head, and it's far in the back of my head because I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> but one thing that's far in the back of my head is, damn, what if I'm pu- like, what if I'm like. Pulling for the bad guy, huh. you know, like does does that ever cross your mind? No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a lot. Hundred percent. Like, I'm I'm not saying that I am. Like, I think I'm gonna always support, no matter what. Like, I'm 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 not gonna be like, oh no, nah, I hope Iran get us. Like, I'm <laughs> never gonna say that. But I'm always like, whenever these things, these types of things happen, I'm like, damn. Like, I sure hope that, like, I'm pulling for the good. Yeah, I mean, guy. I I hope that our intentions. I don't are believe good. that we're in the right on this one. You know what I mean? That's why we don't like Trump so much. I don't think we're in the right on this one, but I I definitely don't want them to get us. But I mean, but the only thing is, is that Trump can't do stuff by himself. So it takes a, a village to make bombings happen. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not. I just don't know Trump. how true that is. No, though, right? he, he is the commander well, in chief of the of the military. Well, I, I he no, can't I, I, just. He is Trump the number can't one. Push a button and yes, bomb he whoever he wants. He, he can. can. He can. But the thing about it is, if it's a war crime. It is up to that soldier, whoever's commit, who's on that mission. They can't actually say, "No, nah, I can't do that if it's a war crime." But if it's yeah. not a war crime, they you if it's direct order, you got to follow up. It's a direct order. You got to follow it, or they all they put you at the military, and you might I mean, be Article it's, it's, Fifteen. It's 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 a lot of things there that like that you got to consider, and I mean, I think is. that. I think that these are the type of things that we don't consider all of the time when we vote in a president that is kind of like, oh, yeah, ha, 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 Donald Trump. And you don't realize this. I mean, like, the thing on, is, this- is I think that Trump can, like, push, and I think that Trump has power. But one thing that I've always learned about in school is checks and balances. Mm-hmm. And there's always checks and balances with anything. So Trump can't just go in his office and be like, ah, I'm going to just push this button and, and bomb. Like, I think that there has to be cooperation. And granted, it, it might be a bunch of his appointees. Yeah. 
you know so like i i can see i can see in an abstract way what you mean but i i just would hope that someone in the room is the good guy so right nah. i don't know this for a fact and and i don't think all of us are great with our um with our civics and free enterprise education not. from high school but i do remember like hearing the story verbatim of when Obama was in the Situation Room mm-hmm. uh, when they were about to kill um, Osama bin Laden, and they were like, "We have good intelligence that he's there." Mm-hmm. Blah 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 blah. Mister President, what do you want to do? Exactly. That's how. I so go. he had to push, like he pushed the button. Yeah. Like it's literally his decision I, on what the fuck. I think what happens, you have a whole bunch of people reporting to you and giving you intel mm-hmm. and all those type of things, telling you the good and the bad, all, every situation possible, and it's up to him to make a decision whether we go or we don't go. You know what I mean? So they gave him intel. He took it. And he said, "Push the button." Like, go on, send a drone over there. You know. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that he could be. I think that he could be the final decision maker. Okay. But that's still a village. Okay. I think that that's like. So I'm saying I don't think it was just like Trump is the start of it. Or I mean, let's say he is. I still think that there's an end. But there's also a start. I don't think that it starts and ends. With yeah, if Trump tells his appointee I, 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 to go find out information yes. on um on on Soleimani, mm-hmm. and then he come back and say, "Oh, he right here, and he gonna be here on this day." And he say, um, "Well, go murk him." And you got to go do that. <laughs> you gotta go murk. As him. long as it's not a war crime, if they yeah. man, that's so that's bro. All of this, all of this in in real life is just in real life. It's wow, real that's, life. Like, that's a real like, person. This ain't, yeah. this ain't Call of yeah, Duty. It's a real person. This ain't Fortnite. Like this is crazy. Yeah. That like. You like not take this person to jail, kill him with a bomb, like and then so that means collateral damage. Like all of these things are so crazy to me, and the fact that like I can't get along with this country because of trade agreements or because of oil or because of whatever yeah. reason it is, or because they're because I'm being evil. impeached. Like mm-hmm. I, whatever it is, like whatever the reason is, I just think it's crazy, and I don't necessarily think that it's us. You know, because like I said, I'm 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 in support unless I know otherwise, and I don't. Um, I just think it's crazy. I just think it's it's just crazy t- the fact that like we got to bomb somebody. Yeah. Like that's just insane. Yeah. I mean, no disrespect, Obama. You not even like, like let's not act like Obama didn't have a record number of drone strikes when he was the president. Yeah. He was taking boys out. Yeah, but he was at least not saying let me take out the vice president of this country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just off GP. Yeah, and I think I think uh, from what I know, what Obama did, it, it was I think he was he was at his last resort. Like, okay, let's try to talk about, it. let's try to do this, let's see what this is going on. I think he was taking out people as his last resort. I think Trump was like, "Fuck yeah. it, let's just go, on. let's do him something, bro." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm in the same breath. Let me make sure that I say this for 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 people to understand how I feel. I also think it's crazy that. There's people out there in other countries, maybe even in this country, but there's people out there in other countries that like take babies and and raise them in a raise them a certain way to be, you know, like evil. You know what I'm saying? Like like to take people and influence them in an evil way, and maybe even not even babies, but like just take people and and are you talking and shape them into an evil an evil people like into a place where like they they shouldn't be into like non human. So you give them an example of like. When racists um like yeah. raise their yes. babies to be racist. That happens here. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I'm saying I'm saying just yes. in general. Like, yeah. oh, just that's in why general. I said even in this yeah, yeah, yeah. country just in general, like the idea of it. But I also think that it's crazy. Like if you could be racist, I think racist people like to be like to be secluded. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they like to do their own thing. Like and and they hate on people, but like I'm talking about a much worse where I'm trying to create a society. I'm trying to create a society of of bad people. Huh. Like that's crazy. But you know, like I'm the president. Isn't that what you just said, though, Raj? To... Though that from in their mind, they're not the bad people. Mm-hmm. They're the good people, right? Sure. We the evil Westerner, yeah. even Western world that's pagan and non-religious and doing X Y Z over here and keep their second you know, in, in, they, no in their reason. story. Yeah. We the bad people. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I just and I and I just like I said earlier, I hope that we're not. You know, I hope that there's good intentions somewhere in there. Mm, I think, yeah, think we're the best. Absolutely, man. A little bit of this, and after and <laughs> if they if probably. they keep playing with us, because you know he said he had 50, fifty-two cities targeted, and you know we surrounded Iran, so you can't get in and out of there right now. Uh, he already sent three thousand troops over there, and you know ready to send more. You know they got a, a on standby right now, so you know if, if yeah, we can't talk this out. 
I mean, we got the potential to obliterate that play. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely, because our military is crazy. Man, let's talk about something else like just in the United States, right? I'm going to switch focus a little bit. Um, so I went to Vegas for New Year's, and I was out there vegas it up. Hey, and hey. soon as soon as we touched down and passing by the um the the, the Uber driver was like, Oh, you wanna go to the to the dispensary and get some dope? Damn. And I was like and I said, Nah, I don't wanna go to the dispensary. And he said, you know, we get paid for every person we take to the dispensary by the Uber. They pay us fifteen dollars a person. Oh. I was like, Wow. Oh no, fifteen dollars per trip. Not per person, but if you bring a car full of people from the airport, it's a fifteen they'll give you fifteen dollars. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. Um, like that he's being honest about that. Yeah. And um but I told him I said, nah, I, I like to get um my weed from lower socioeconomic class. And I said that in a way to as a joke, but in reality it got me to thinking about that, about how damn dog, like this whole weed thing is gonna be legalized across the United States. You don't have very you don't soon. have to have a weed man no more, huh? <laughs> but they just kind of completely boxing out black people. Whoa. Like, are there? And, and let me ask you this question, Raj. I'm asking you a real question. Are there like black owned weed dispensaries in in Colorado? Because you live out there, like that you know of. That's like, oh, this is the black people own this one, so I want to go there. Let me, let me, let me actually, let me touch on that. I want to apologize if there is for not supporting that huh. business because I don't know. Yeah, because I've never looked into it. But I'm glad that you made me realize that I didn't look into it because I will. But yeah. you act like black people I mean, don't want people who sell so weed, know. though. Come on now. No, I, I don't mean it that way. Right, and okay. I also so, so let me let me back. I also don't want to really support that what you said, like about boxing out black people, because I think that we can get involved in that. So let's, let me let me let me. Industry. Can I can I do this? Then I didn't I mean, want to do all of this, but let me do this. I read three articles today. One was called Black Law- Lawmakers to Block Legalized Marijuana in New-, New York if Their Communities Don't Benefit. And basically it says 10 states in the Washington, D.C. have legalized recreational marijuana. And as lawmakers consider their own laws, they seem intent on not repeating what has they see in other states as mistakes. They say one misstep in particular stands out. None of the 10 states or Washington ensured that minority communities would share an economic windfall of legalization, missing out on an opportunity to redress years of having disproportionate number of African-Americans arrested for marijuana charges. That was like one thing, like talking about like this potentially $3 billion industry that none of the money is being um, like, there's no safeguards that it's going to get to disenfranchised populations. Another one I read was marijuana legalization is a racial justice issue. It says people um, harmed by enforcement of marijuana must have a place in the burgeoning marketplace created by legalization. Indeed, any legalization bill should include provisions that enable people who have struggled to find employment due to marijuana conviction to participate meaningfully in the new marijuana industry, excluding people directly impacted by marijuana um, criminalization from the industry further entrenches the outsized impact that the war of drugs has on communities of color. And the third one I read about was just Illinois marijuana legalization doesn't apply to public housing. That basically, if they legalize it in Illinois, people who have public housing um, can't participate in it because they're going to be like, nah, that's a federal place that you're living in and we can take that business away and all the rest of that. So I'm, I didn't want to go into all of those <laughs> stories, but I wrote them down just in case. That's my point. That's not crazy. necessarily that black people sell weed, that we're not mm-hmm. allowed, like we're not... Yeah. yeah, it's not. And we're I, not illegally given. We're not getting given opportunities to be able to mm-hmm. invest in and be able to profit off marijuana like everybody else is. Basically, what you're saying. Hmm. I mean, that's interesting. I think you know that's very interesting. That's crazy. Um, because I guess what I'm what I'm thinking about is would that person living in that place own a shoe store huh. as well, like or something huh. that like I'm I'm serious. I know it might sound a little. No, I'm listening. Like, Go ahead. Um, Attack. But like what I'm what I'm I'm considering is is that person are those people gonna are they gonna open a business any like I'm 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 saying are they gonna open a business what type of business are they gonna open how can they how can they gain capital or get a loan to open a business if they're in that in that position so I think once you get yourself out of that position then maybe you can look into that I'm not saying that you sh- I think that you should definitely have I think that one I think marijuana should be federally i think it should be a federal law that it is legal in every state because if you if you don't know and you probably do 
you can't you can't purchase marijuana with a debit card mm. because most yeah. banks are like federally backed and so they don't support the sale or the purchase of marijuana with you know, with a, with your debit card. I thought card. you could. They just so changed the can, name of the place that you yeah. that you purchased. No, nah, nah. So what they do is, is they basically use your debit card as cash. Ah. So like they, they have an ATM. So they use your debit card as cash and then they give you the cash back. Like so that you take $60 out and your stuff costs fifty six sixty six. They give you... They give you that change back. In cash. Oh, you know I do saying? remember that. So that like loophole, in huh? cash. So like, you yeah, know, I think that there's some weird laws and, and I, I don't think that it just only affects black people, but I do understand what you're saying. But I still question if you're in that position, I'm section eight. I'm not probably going to, I'm probably not going to own a business, what, a dispense, okay. a business. Not, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm saying if I have a skill or a craft. Yes, I can be a handyman. I could be a beautician. I could be a barber. But the fact that I'm going to own a building that that has to be federally or or locally regulated to sell marijuana, I don't know if you'll be in that position anyway. Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's a really good question, but I think I would counter with two things. The first thing I would say is this. If they legalize tomorrow prostitution, would you go say that, oh, all y'all chicks on um, Bissonette who sell it, who sell it, who walk in the streets and selling ass, like y'all can't, y'all can't be a, like, no, you need X amount of licenses and you need this and you need that. Or will we be sitting there telling them that, oh no, you're not in a position, I, like you can't, you, you couldn't sell ass, like if, like, no, so you so, can't be, so I'm, I feel, go ahead. yeah, I feel what you're saying, mm-hmm. but you don't need a building for prostitution. <laughs> All you need is a home. <laughs> so... I'm serious. I'm no, you're right. For real. Though. Like yeah, you don't really right. need much. Like that's a. I feel. I get where you're going, but give me an a, a institution. Or give me a. Give me a business where there needs to be a building. But the, I think involved, the, the, the thing like with TAC sort of, in, in, in in selling marijuana is that every everybody who does it has to have extreme license. They all. Everybody's talking about how hard it is to get into that that you know that field because all the licenses you need, all you need this yeah. insurances and all that stuff you, that you have to have to be able to get into it. So if you own Section Eight. To Roger's point, it's going to be a lot. If you're on Section 8 and you can afford to do that, you shouldn't I be agree. on Section 8. But what if you just, but forget the Section 8 component. What if you're just a big time drug dealer and you got nothing but weed, money from selling weed? Like you've been selling pounds. Then you shouldn't no, be if, living if, in a Section, a section well, no, no, 8. Well, no, no. The position. Section 8 thing was just one of yeah, the three. But, it, no, it was but, just but, about those but if you do, that couldn't do it. I'm talking about the other you use, you use that money. You use that money what to are, get licensed. You use that services? money to get your license. But, but that's the thing. That's the thing, Lowe's. That's the big point that I think y'all are missing. That that's the issue. That they're not granting licenses to everyone. And they're not granting licenses to people who are like, oh, no, you were convicted of weed charges 10 years ago. So we're not going to give you a license. Oh. That's Well, the I also idea. think I also. So like, here's the, here's the thing. Here's how I feel about it. And I, I get where you're going with the racial aspect of it. But I just think if you are incapable and I'm serious, if you are incapable of following the law. At one point in time when it was not legal, I think you've said then, this. Before. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe okay. I can consider the fact that you shouldn't be able to run a business like this because I don't know what type of what type of um, integrity. Well, I, 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 might be like I, big I, I, don't brand you know. I don't know about yeah. that. I think I think if you sold weed illegally, you'd probably be damn good selling it legally. That's just my point. Absolutely, I think <laughs> I think from a I think socially as well, but yeah. from a legal like from a lawful standpoint, I just don't know what else you're capable of. Like you might take it to the next level where you selling that, that, that hole, yolo. you know. Like, so I'm, yeah. So I'm just saying, like, I just don't know if I necessarily would want to trust. Like, that might be a clause that I would put in that law as well if I was making that decision because I don't. You might try to capitalize on the on the on the legal system like you were doing before. Yet and still, I think the biggest idea is that you should just like the Rooney Rule, like we talked about mm-hmm. earlier, and like you have to you have to like let some black people hi, um, apply chance. for these jobs. Yeah. You should give you should give some minorities an opportunity to do I, this, and it I, should be written into the law. I, th- I think it really matters on how much money you got, because I mean, you know, some rappers who've been convicted for weed and all that shit, and they they are heavy into it. You know, they invested in it. Um, Gary Payton got them cookies. Yeah, I mean, the game, so the Snoop game, Dog. them, Snoop Dog Jim Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the? It's a basketball player who has you know a couple of basketball players who in, uh, retired basketball players who went to it. So I mean, it's, it's like some Gary guys Payton. who. But Gary Payton used to play basketball. Just think how much you, money you know. What's crazy though, so. I'm going to say this. I've met some people out here that have plans of going to other places to start to start businesses. Like, yeah, like, so like they literally have a basement full of weed right now, mm. illegally. Like you, you can, I think you can grow up to like six plants out here. I think that that's what the legal amount is. 
they have a illegal operation going on in waiting to go to let's say Louisiana or Texas and for, open up for shop. them to, I mean if if yep to open up shop ready to have weed on deck mm. right now I just think that that goes along with the mantra of real G's moving time. <laughs> I mean, you say it a lot, and like lasagna, and I think I think that I think it's fine, but I think on a lot of levels, I think they just need to stop excluding. Us. <laughs> well, let me get a quick word from um, one of our sponsors, the Black Coffee Company. So, five young Xavier alumni have come together to create the Black Coffee Company. Man, y'all visit the theblackcoffeecompany.com to check out their art, apparel, and uh, definitely their coffee. With five unique blends of Colombian, Brazilian, Ethiopian, and Peruvian coffees, these brothers are giving you some of the best java from around the globe and some food for thought as well. Um, these fellas aren't only distributing quality coffee. They preach the major tenets of entrepreneurship, financial freedom, and community empowerment. Uh, the whole movement is dope, but don't take my word for it. Visit theblackcoffeecompany.com and see what all the fuss is about. The Black Coffee Company. Coffee for the culture. Ooh, if you want to have some coffee with your friends and do black folk stuff, you got to go to Black Coffee Company. Stay woke, people. You know what's one of my favorite things while we're on intermission right now is freezing alcohol, or let's say whiskey per se, because I think brown is prettier than white. Uh, All right, say it again. That's the end of the podcast. No, now you ain't on intermission no more. (laughs) (laughs) Freezing whiskey or or brown and just looking at it being a syrup. Viscousy. Viscous like. Viscous. 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 Hey man, another story that Raj brought up this week that I thought was awesome. Um, a counterfeit shoe ring, man. Um, so if y'all go read it, it's called How 470 Million um, Worth of Fake Nikes Got Into the U.S. It's by Justin Rorlick of Quartz. That's QZ.com. Go read that. It's a crazy story. Basically, um, them boys were sending big, um, this dude named Queen Fu Ray Zing had been sending like 40 foot shipping containers from um, Nanshan, China, and they'd be like coming into different ports in the United States. And it's like on the manifest, they'd say stuff like, it's um, 11,019 kilos of paper napkins. But then when the feds, like knew what was happening and got in, they would find like two rows of D card boxes with like napkins. And then all of a sudden, boom, the rest is counterfeit J's and shit. Right. Um, right. And it basically the hotly contested nature of the fake goods has seemed to um, boosted the consumer interest in counterfeits, though demand for authenticity on the secondhand market is high. There's also a sect of customers that actively seeks out knockoffs. Naturally, the CB the CBP, which is the Customs and Border Patrol, warns against counterfeit items and says it's not a victimless crime. Um, these items also often fund Fuck national and transnational criminal organization and cost tax billion, payers billions. I mean, it's literally the same thing they say about any other thing that we think is a victimless crime. No, it it supports crime. So um, basically that happened. Um, are we ready to have this real discussion? And this is a discussion I want to have, Raj. Are we okay Absolutely. with fakes? Absolutely. I want to say this. If I was an NFL football player and I had the option of... Let me actually say this. Some, someone that I hold, a person that I hold in high regard. I just got this news tonight apparently ordered from one of these sites from a good site not 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 nike cheap shoes <laughs> from a good site ordered his aunt a bag a louis v gucci i don't know what it was ysl something a bag that bag in vegas went through a check of authenticity and passed so that bag on the on the us market would have cost Made by made by that that um producer of bags would have cost probably I don't know three thousand to five thousand to seven thousand dollars and he probably got it somewhere around if I had to guess because I don't know the particulars probably about five hundred maybe let's say less two hundred to five hundred dollars so he got it for way cheaper same quality same material and everything. I don't understand what the big idea is. So I feel like if I was a if I was a rich person. And I knew that I could get 
and I was, and I guess my pride would have to be in a certain place as well. If I knew I could get every single shoe for twenty dollars less, but I wouldn't have to hustle for them, I could get the I could get the Eminem Jordans, uh, I can get all the Yeezys, uh, and they're the same exact quality, uh, and I don't have to hustle, I don't have to try to hit up the plug. I don't have to stand in line. I don't have to pay somebody to stand in line. I don't have to go to Stock X. I don't have to go to Goat. I could just get them. They fake, but like they're real because they're made with the same exact materials with the same exact molds. I think I would have every single shoe, and I myself would open up a storage unit to house my fakes. I mean, isn't it the same as like on some levels? Like, oh, I man, I don't want um, fake DVDs back in the day, and then somebody said, "Well, I'll burn you a DVD. It's the same movie." You can watch that thing. <laughs> it's gonna play the same. It's got the same quality. What you mean you don't want it? Well, so here's the here's the thing. So here's the difference between that. If if I, I think I think that DVD and Blu-ray piracy is more of a crime mm. because because these because there's a plenty of DVDs and Blu-rays. Whenever Avengers Endgame came out, they didn't make a thousand of them. For limited edi- a limited edition release, and only these people can have that movie on. And Blu-ray. it wasn't absorbed. Whenever they, whenever either. Jordan, when, yeah, and right, and whenever Jordan makes a an exclusive Jordan, they make five hundred pairs. If Jordan was to make a shoe that had five hundred pairs, if I could get my hands on those, I can resell those for an astronomical mm-hmm. amount. Right, because you made them, you made them limited edition, and that's what they do with all of the shoes that they collab with. Travis Scott comes out with some shoes, Virgil and they only make yeah. cer- a certain amount. But I can go online and buy the same exact shoe, just made in a different factory, not by that provider. It, but it's the same exact shoe, and real sneakerheads would never, would never um, know the difference. Then yeah, I I don't think that that's a crime at all. I think that you should have made more for the public. I mean, and so no, but you, you're absolutely. I'm not with I, it. I think you're making a lot of good <laughs> yeah. points, and I think that Los and I have. Um, we've talked about this at, at length about how we've 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 dealt with some guys who um, would have shoes, and, and then we found out that they was not real shoes, and they were terrible knockoffs. Yeah. But this was ten to fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. I think, like with everything right. else, things get better. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm pretty sure if we went dabble in the counterfeit market, it's probably a lot better than it was fifteen years ago. Like you just said, the same exact mold. Like just if across can, the street, they making the same joint. They just bought the mold from somebody. He got, like, he got, no, he got five. Dude got five. Stole the mold. All they got, they probably selling the mold. Like, hey, y'all want these molds? I will sell them to y'all. We ain't tripping. <laughs> if you could find a scene from Dope, Dope is the movie Cap I was G. thinking about. Yep. If you could find a scene from Dope with Cap G, which is a rapper, I'm, play it now. One of these alligator bags was made here. One is from the stove, which one is which? The right one, I mean, because it's Mm -hmm. They both look the same. The reality is, I sell 90% of my stuff to white hoes. Most aren't rich enough to afford retail. The white thing that is. I don't know. They know. They know the only difference. Between these two bags is the person rocking them. So when they rock them, people gonna assume it's real. And the flip of that is, it doesn't matter if you had the receipt from Barney sewn into the bag. People gonna assume it's fake. Only you know the truth. So what are you, man? Are you a real? Are you a fake? I, I know exactly what you're talking and about. Let's see if I slide it how in. I feel. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, so let's go to these questions, right? Are you okay with shoe fakes? We said yes. Are you okay with belt fakes? Yes. I'm not a big fan of fake. I guess they got to be good belt. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm cool on the, the fake little belts. Fake, fake um, jeans. Nah, no. But they'll fall apart. Fake shades. And I'm not cool with, I'm not cool with fake belts. At all. Fake shades. Oh yeah, I wear some fake shades. I wear some no. fake shades. Fake wallets. I'm not. I'm not okay. Fake what? Wallets. How much is it though? I'm not spending no. two hundred dollars on fake wallets. I'm only cool with shoes. Fake earrings. I think oh, I'm. Yeah, go- I got some fake earrings. Yes, definitely of course. Some- fake chains. Yeah, definitely had a, a fake chain before. Of course. Okay, so we okay with chains, 
earrings, and shoes. With jewelry. With jewelry and shoes. Jewelry and shoes. Okay. I just want to know where y'all stood on these things, man. I want to encourage all of our listeners to, to know that how I feel about jewelry. If you go and watch the, the Netflix series Explained on Diamonds. Mm. And I'll just leave it at that. Mm. It's the same quality, right? Diamonds aren't as rare as you think. Got you. Got you. True. I mean, it's a lot of things. And I mean, I think we're in this this place where the counterfeit is such a... It's always been such a thing. Like, boys that come with, oh, man, that's some big Fugazi Jordans. And we mm-hmm. could tell, look, your jump man is got a, doing splits. <laughs> but if your jump man not doing splits, <laughs> if your jump man is really the jump yeah. man, and, like, it's the same thing with the same materials, just made in um, Bangladesh and not China, kind of, like, what's the difference, yeah. really? Um, exactly. Now, if you jump, if you got them red, if you got them red Yeezy boots on, um, yeah, then I'm, I'm, you know, I think you got to put forth some effort if you're gonna be, if you're gonna call yourself a sneakerhead, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna wear exclusive shoes, you need to have on something that's like that came out. Listeners, do us a favor. If you got a fire pair of fakes counterfeit something, send us a picture of them, man. I want to see some fire. Counterfeit. We're not gonna call your name out. We're not gonna call your name out. Yeah, we're not. We're not. You know, we're just gonna look at the picture I'm and be make like, sure I'm a police "Okay, dad. I like that. Yeah. I like that." And um, and we'll do it that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, do that. Do that this episode, and um, then we'll just kind of see how that shit plays. And cue up that music for nothing nice to say. You know, they say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice to say, but I don't know nice. I ain't nothing nice. You hear me? So I was running it with one of my homies the other day, and I'm not here to air him or her out about their parenting, because most people don't even know they got kids, because the kid ain't on social media. But we got to talking or whatever, and that kid was cutting the fucking fool in the background. And I said, Santa Claus ain't going to bring you nothing if you keep acting up. I said that because, A, I'm not a parent, and B, I figured that type of, that's the type of shit parents say, and C... I've heard parents say that shit to kids before. And actually, D, I think my people used to tell me that growing up. But as soon as I said it, they told me, look, chill out, man. That don't work at this point in the year. And proceeded to tell the kid, yo, you got to stop being bad or the Easter Bunny won't bring you a basket. Damn it, man. Is that what parenting is? Do I have to scale my kids into acting right, using Hallmark holidays and events as a means to keep them in line? And where does this stop? Do I say, say, little girl. You better quit crying or the tooth fairy not coming when you lose your second by a cuspid or a lateral incisor. Hey, little nigga, you keep cutting up and Martin Luther King gonna make you go to school on MLK Day. <laughs> Boy, if you keep getting ends in conduct, Trump gonna take away all the fireworks on 4th of July. <laughs> Look up. If you don't go to sleep, Lucifer won't allow you to trick or treat on Halloween. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works. But I feel like parents need a, some new go-tos instead of some scare tactics that will wear out when the kids get a little older or, 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 or do the scare tactics just become taking away things like phones and video games and cars and privileges and won't let you go to your school basketball game when you get a little older but I guess people do the same thing when they're grown ups when you don't act right your old lady take away access to that dome won't let you smash or go out with your friends or you withhold that dick if you're a dude or, or don't show up to their family functions damn y'all y'all some petty ass people but I guess like most things, it's nurture, not nature. And you get it from your upbringing. It's your parents' faults. And those of you who are parents now are starting this vicious cycle all over again by holding Santa Claus over your kids when they misbehave. So find something else to do. Because I ain't got nothing nice to say about people who won't let you get what you want until you act right. Like it's some sort of doggy treat. <laughs> so I won't say nothing at all. Or you could just MLK gonna make you go to school. That would be fun. Or, or you could just whoop your kid ass like normal, like, <laughs> like, like normal. I'm not threatening you with no takeaway stuff. I'm just gonna whoop your ass if I'm telling you. If I can, tell you twice, you can your ass whoop me. I'm not. We don't do that. And it ain't. Think, <laughs> luckily, my daughter ain't no damn fool, so I don't. I, I only had to whoop my child like once or twice. So. But when she was little, y'all probably used to say Santa Claus ain't no, gonna bring you that. I wasn't. That, I'm not that father, man. I don't tell her, oh, Santa Claus ain't going to do you. My baby, no one, she wasn't that bad, but I wasn't going to do that. But like, hey, man, I said, stop. <laughs> Damn, by no Santa Claus. Santa Claus don't, live, don't run my household. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> there you go, man. 
One more um, definitely story that I wanted to talk about is um, so Raj sent this story too, which we all know is fake news. It says the uh, according the the headline was white billionaire offers <laughs> one billion dollars to to breed LeBron to breed and Serena. LeBron like they dogs. <laughs> it says according to several internet portals, Mister Vladis Sergin Sugarin, a Russian billionaire, is willing to pay one billion dollars to LeBron James and Serena Williams to have a son, <laughs> according to the report. Vladir thinks that a son of the two of them would be a super athlete. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, first of all, it's all the red, red flags and fake news. Don't no, just say breed. <laughs> breed is hilarious. Like, you have to have a son. No, y'all can have babies, but it gotta, it gotta be, a, be son. a son. Like, that's a whole nother... That's that's just funny as all. But, um, like, we talked about this a little bit. We were talking about it last week. If you could breed a super athlete, is it LeBron and, and, and Serena? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I don't yes. know wrong with that. Who else is it? I mean, yeah, it could be Giannis. Like, it don't have to. Like, Serena, I think, is unassailably the woman that you'd pick here. Like, I don't know who else. I mean, if you want a Simone Biles, like a Simone Biles and Camaro might be nice at football, though. Yeah. uh, At running uh, back. Track. (laughs) No, I don't want that. I want LeBron. It depends on what you want to play. Who's Exactly where I'm going. You saying both and that girl from LSU? Soccer. Yeah. Quick twitch. Nope. LeBron and Serena. That's I think that the white billionaire um is you know, right on right on par. Like yeah, he well, did he, good. Carly Lloyd and 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 R- Cristiano Ronaldo. Nope. Carly Lloyd is a regular white chick that <laughs> just is good at soccer. <laughs> but they ain't got nobody in the world that look like LeBron and they ain't got nobody in the world I mean, that look Jay-Z, like Jay Z Beyonce if you, so, Oh well they already did that, huh? <laughs> 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 so Blue Ivy gonna be just nice in music. <laughs> so you go. Blue Ivy that, be is nice funny, dog. that is funny. Chris Brown and Rihanna. Nah, dog. shut Stop up. It. So Chris Brown and Missy Elliott. Wait, okay. Chris Brown and Missy Elliott. So, so this is the. I think a lot of. I think what y'all what y'all talking about, like what y'all touching on in 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 the scenarios y'all giving, are very environmental. Yeah. And I think that these people would be in an in an environment that would allow them to be good singers or good dancers or whatever good soccer players. But I think genetically breeding horses. Realistically, LeBron and Serena would make a. I mean, fire. It's how child. if you ever look Whitney at Houston, um, Raj, Ruben's like if you look at like the. What are those people called? Uh, uh, the the triple crown winners and stuff. If you look at the That's horses, do. do you know that like a hundred percent of them are like, oh, his great grandfather is secretary at Me- like with Seattle yes. slew. Like, no, they, but they, they, no, they more, more specific than that, they be like his his great grandfather or his his dad was good at the quarter and his mom was good yeah. at the mile. Mm-hmm. Like they. They, yeah. they do that type of stuff. They put them together. That's selective breeding. And then they put them both together and they there good at go. the bottom up. <laughs> You're stupid. But, okay, so this was the other part that I had to write down because I thought it was funny. What if that man bred him, bred him a big super athlete? What if LeBron and um, Serena saw this story and was like, you know what, that'd be a good idea. And went make him a little super athlete kid to be raised in this Russian lab like Ivan Drago. And <laughs> when the baby, when the baby like 15... That nigga just big tender EJ Johnson yeah. kind of don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> that boy is 6'10. And like, nah, I'm straight. 6'10, 290, 0% body want, fat. I want, I want a real. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play, I want to play the cello, dad. <laughs> I want to play video games like Vernon on uh, oh, nah, Ballers, I, I wanna, man. I mean, I think you would have to China. I think you would have to do the Chinese thing. I want to be a YouTuber. Thing, you know, where you like... <laughs> yeah, you have to do the Chinese thing where you like make them do what you <laughs> yeah, want them to do. So you're going to... That's the only way it's going to work. You're going you know, to be a basketball player. Oh, you're doing this. Player. You ain't got no choice. And if, you, if you're not good at yeah, basketball, key you, you will move. be somebody's defensive end, period. Are we going to key you? This is a kid. We don't need you. I got, I got, I got four more. Mm-hmm. I got some brothers and sisters in the, uh, in the lab right now. Four more embryos. Yeah, we got them saved. Wait, you think you was the lad one? Come on, now. You think I'm spending a billion dollar for for, for one off? off? Come on, man. <laughs> I got it. I just think the worst thing that could happen is if that if he wasn't so obviously he would be a pretty good athlete or he'd be a very good athlete. I just would hate for him to not be as good as we think, and his career best would be the bowl game between Ball and Ball State. That's what I think would be one of the worst things 
of all time that could happen. <laughs> oh shit! Not not the bowl game, but <laughs> not Norfolk and Norfolk State. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here we go. Here hey, we go Los, I didn't even I didn't even start it. Los, I didn't even start it. Twenty twenty. Los, I didn't even start hey. it. No, I told him to stop before the podcast. Hey, I was listening when you when you see it. or hear bullying reported. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Absolutely. Fresno versus Fresno State. Um <laughs> Yeah, they get one last one in. So yeah. Or, or maybe we could get him in the um in the gym and start and start getting big. I know a perfect place for it. Let me hear a word really quickly from A to Z Fitness. Look, it's never a bad time to get in the best shape of your life. Do yourself a favor and go to Zeno Fitness and get with the homie out for Zeno. In addition to virtual training, his state-of-the-art Stafford workout facility is located in Southwest Houston, right off of Murphy Road. You could come to A to Z Fitness and use the equipment. Schedule a private workout with one of the trainers, or do a boot camp to get you headed in the right direction. They're open seven days a week, so feel free to join the team to scope and tone, do high intensity and strength training, and ultimately get the results that you're looking for. All of the coaches at A to Z are knowledgeable on fitness and health, and will have you motivated to be the best you that you could be. Listen, I'm gonna stop talking about it because you could have already visited the site and got started on your journey toward being a champion. A to Z Fitness. It's about damn time to get fine. So pull up. If you want to get big from A to Z, go A to Z Fitness. It's 2020. Ha! <laughs> that was done well. Hey, look. We've been off of work. I've been off of work for a couple weeks, you know. Uh, you know, this time. Los is too. What's that first week look back looking for like for man, you, man? I ain't want to go. I want to like four more days. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You start getting used to not going yeah, to work. it feels so good. <laughs> feel good not to go to work, man. It feels great. Hey, I, I'm not on. The, I'm not on the education. The education schedule, uh, but I took some days off as well during the holidays, and I feel you. I did not want to go. I don't want to go. I don't even like missing two days. Like y'all boys get two days. I don't like missing two days of work because I feel like it's a struggle for me to get back into the swing. A weekend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't like it. Like, I like one day and then a break. You know, like, I go back and then another day later in the week. Yeah, the way I work, I be it, – it's different. It's a little different my job in Los in that I, I, like, I bring that home with me every day. So, I always got my computer and I'm always doing it. So, it takes a lot for me to disconnect. But when I disconnect, I the boy disconnect. I don't. I think that's the first time – well, no, you actually – I was about to say it's the first time I've been over your house and you pick up the computer by a lot. You did. But we was doing stuff. We was messing around. Well, I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't really just doing work, work at that point. But you know, it is what it is. I know how these weeks, um, how these weeks go. But man, look, yeah. Um, last thing I guess we're gonna leave y'all with is by the time y'all hear this podcast, we're gonna be ramping up for LSU. That's what we got left. Yes, Lord. That's what we got That's left. What we got LSU. Need to go ahead and win. We, 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 we still got, got, we got a horse in the race, but he's not our horse. I didn't say this out loud to anybody that day, but you know I lost an 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 inordinate amount of money on the Saints game on Sunday. Like like to the point where I don't want to bet again this Mm -hmm. season, but if I hit that LSU ticket and I get that money, then I could. If if we if we hit the LSU ticket. Oh yeah. Look how you try to do me. You right. (laughs) You know why you know why that happened though? Because you try to leave me out that bit. That's why. (laughs) <laughs> That's why the no, 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 you gonna make me disrespect on this podcast. <laughs> we had though Appalachian. <laughs> no, Appalachian. I had Appalachian State. I picked Appalachian because I figured they, you know, every time they got a state involved, like the state, them. I figured well, the Appalachian. I, 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 I think Lowe said, said he Lowe had asked me to put down a couple dollars on Monroe versus UL Monroe, and uh, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> hey, that's the last one, man. I'm finna, start, I'm, finna go, I'm finna turn the podcast no, ugly. When I said Monroe versus you, Monroe, I just opened up a whole new bubble of ones we can do that. You sure did. You sure did. Because supposedly, supposedly next year they got a game versus first chance you and last chance you. I can't wait to see that. Okay, whatever. That ain't funny no more. I hate y'all, man. I hate hey, look, y'all. y'all. No, I hate y'all. Uh, uh, I have... <laughs> 
Y'all have a great weekend, man. As always, make it a best friend weekend. And uh, we out. Bully to always bully. I didn't even know Bob Bob. Oh, Bob Bob. Bob Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. He don't like us. Mad at y'all. <laughs>
Like, like, my, first first cousin, my first cousin, my first cousin is the director week. of scouting. I'm going hang out with Lionel and we run in the Cowboys. Stop Al getting fired first week. You're <laughs> not gonna run the Cowboys. Jerry, and all Jerry y'all boys have nothing but you, no. You all y'all boys gonna have Cowboys gear. All y'all boys gonna have Cowboys gear. I do want the some next shit, day. Though. I just want some NFL shit. <laughs> what you drinking, Raj? Okay. 2020. <laughs> Superb mm-hmm. dog 2020. No, All right, I got that rumble up, man. Let's get it up. To pull, to pull it up. Mm-hmm. Y'all need it amped up. Let me get it. Right. 